Even with cranes, helicopters, tractors, and trucks at our disposal, it would be tough to construct the Great Pyramid of Giza today. Its construction 4,500 years ago is so astounding in some people's eyes that they have invoked mystical or even alien involvement. But the current theory of the building of the Great Pyramid, the notion that it was assembled from the inside out via a spiraling internal ramp, is probably still the best construction plan. Interestingly, the Earth Pyramid Project is raising funds to erect a pyramidal structure in an as-yet undecided location, built of stones quarried all around the world. It will contain a time capsule to be opened 1,000 years from now. Welcome to Mega Luxury. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss our amazing videos. Let's begin with a rough estimation of building the Great Pyramid today. If we could replicate the wonder of the ancient world, the Great Pyramid of Giza for a cool 5 billion US dollars in today's currency. First, let's look at the blueprint. The pyramid is 756 feet long on each side, 481 feet high, and composed of 2.3 million stones weighing nearly 3 tons each for a total mass of 6.5 million tons. Approximately 5.5 million tons of limestone, 8,000 tons of granite, and 500,000 tons of mortar were used in the construction. Most of the blocks were quarried at Giza, just south of the pyramid, an area known as the Central Field. The white limestone used for the casing originated from Tura, 10 kilometers south of Giza, and was transported by boat down the Nile. In 2013, rolls of papyrus called the Diary of Murrer were discovered written by a supervisor of the deliveries of limestone and other construction materials from Tura to Giza in the last known year of Khufu's reign. The granite stones in the pyramid were transported from Aswan more than 900 kilometers away. The largest, weighing 25 to 80 tons, formed the roofs of the king's chamber and the relieving chambers above it. Ancient Egyptians cut stone into rough blocks by hammering grooves into natural stone faces, inserting wooden wedges, then soaking these with water. As the water was absorbed, the wedges expanded, breaking off workable chunks. Once the blocks were cut away, they were carried by boat either up or down the Nile River to the pyramid. Legend has it that the structure was erected in just 20 years' time, meaning that a block had to have been moved into place about every five minutes of each day and night. That would have required the slave labor of thousands. The Greeks believed that slave labor was used, but modern discoveries made at nearby workers' camps associated with construction at Giza suggest that it was built instead by thousands of conscript laborers. Worker graffiti found at Giza suggests haulers were divided into Zao groups of 40 men, consisting of four subunits that each had an overseer of 10. While traditional theories hold that the pyramid was built via a long external ramp, such a ramp would have had to wind around for more than a mile to be shallow enough to drag stones up, and it would have had a stone volume twice that of the pyramid itself. A new, more economical theory gained traction among architects and Egyptologists holds that the bottom third of the pyramid's height was constructed by stones dragged up an external ramp, but above that for the remaining 33% or so of the pyramidal volume. The Egyptians worked their way up through the inside of the structure, building around a gently sloping internal ramp and fitting stone blocks into place as they ascended. Furthermore, the workers could have reused the stones quarried for the external ramp to build the pyramid's upper echelons, so that nothing went to waste. Jean-Pierre Houdin, the French architect who developed the internal ramp theory, has collaborated with a team at Dassault Systems, a 3D graphics firm to create a virtual model of the construction process. A team of scholars at Laval University in Quebec is now planning an infrared imaging investigation, which could soon reveal the spiraling ramp within the Great Pyramid. If found, it will be the final proof of Houdin's theory. But whether or not the theory bears out, Houdin says an inside-out construction would still be the best way to build the Great Pyramid. We would be quite sure we could do the same today, and it would be the most economical method. There would be two main differences between pyramid building now and then. First, instead of people pulling the sleds that carry the stones up the ramps, you would use something with an engine, he said. Secondly, for the topmost 10 or 15 meters, you would use a small crane. Just as cranes are lifted onto the tops of skyscrapers today, a helicopter would position a crane onto a flat top of the pyramid. Stones and other construction materials dragged up to that level via the internal ramp would then be set in place by crane. It wouldn't be feasible to build the entire structure with cranes, because they wouldn't be able to reach far enough to lift materials from the base to the center of the top of the pyramid. 
While the pyramid was originally built by 4,000 workers over the course of 20 years using strength, sleds, and ropes, building the pyramid today using stone-carrying vehicles, cranes, and helicopters would probably take 1,500 to 2,000 workers around 5 years, and it would cost on the order of 5 billion US dollars based on manpower and cost of constructing the Hoover Dam in Colorado during the Great Depression. The dam contains a volume of concrete roughly equal to the stone in the pyramid. By comparison, the 1,776-foot-tall One World Trade Center tower, constructed in downtown Manhattan, costs an estimated $4 billion. There are no plans to build a full-scale Great Pyramid, but a campaign for a scaled-down model is underway. The Earth Pyramid Project, based in the United Kingdom, is raising funds to erect a pyramidal structure in an as-yet undecided location. Built of stones quarried from all over the world, it will contain a time capsule to be opened 1,000 years from now. Funded by governments and organizations around the globe, the Earth Pyramid will not only provide a window into contemporary culture for future societies, it will also serve as an opportunity to test Houdin's construction theory of the Great Pyramid of Giza. Many alternative, often contradictory theories have been proposed regarding the pyramid's construction techniques. One mystery of the pyramid's construction is its planning. Somebody suggested that they use the same method that had been used for earlier and late construction, laying out parts of the plan on the ground at a one-to-one -one scale. Such a working diagram would also serve to generate the architecture of the pyramid with precision unmatched by any other means. The basalt blocks of the pyramid temple show clear evidence of having been cut with some kind of saw with an estimated cutting blade of 15 feet or 4.6 meters in length. And some suggest that this super saw may have had copper teeth and weighed up to 140 kilograms or 310 pounds. He theorizes that such a saw could have been attached to a wooden trestle support and possibly used in conjunction with vegetable oil, cutting sand, emery, or pound cords to cut the blocks, which would have required the labor of at least a dozen men to operate it in a single hand. Well, what do you think about the reconstructing of the Great Pyramid again? And would it be worth it to even think of creating a replica of it? And how much could that cost? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're going to love to watch our video about how does it look if ancient architectural wonders were reconstructed again on our channel. Make sure to click the subscribe button for future notifications and never miss our videos. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video. Till then, stay tuned.